Hey kids, welcome to another math video. This is for module five, lesson one. This is to complement my other video that I have for uh, module five, lesson one. And um, when I was making that one, there were a couple things I wanted to finish up with but didn't do. I have the answers for the warm up, and also I have a little practice with our dot page. So anyway, just to review, or if this is the only video you've seen of mine, well, first of all, click subscribe and come back again. But second of all, uh, I'm going to try to go back and forth so that you guys can see, well, first of all, what are we doing in here? Second of all, get a little practice. Um, so in module five, we're starting with volume and volume. We just jump right past area and we start talking about three dimensional figures. So when talking with my students, I said, okay, well, there's regular movies that you go see on the screen and the screen is flat. And then there are 3D movies where you have to wear your special little glasses. And I said, what's the difference? And they said, well, 3D is when everything is jumping off the screen and coming at you. And I said, yes, that's that third dimension. So in module five with this first lesson, first of all, Understanding what a square looks like as opposed to a cube is really, really important. If the square is flat like these figures are down here, a rectangle or a square or a rectangle, square, rectangle, rectangle, then those are just flat on the paper. There's no height that will impact their volume. And so check out my other video to get a complete lesson on uh, lesson one and uh, working in the book and the problem set. But the answers to the warm up from the other video, here they are. So I said, go figure out the area of these rectangles and squares so that you can understand that the first part of the formula is length times width. So it's simple answers. The area of the first one was four times two is eight, five times five is 25, two times seven, 14. When they only give you one measurement for a square, that means the one side, of course, it will be the same as the all these sides or the other side. Six times six would be 36. Uh, three times five is 15. 11 times three is 33. Also note how these are labeled. Each one has the measurement with the exponent two. And the think of it this way. Two dimensions, or length times width, means two things that you're multiplying. If you think about it that way, you'll hopefully remember that two is for area, but three is for volume. So when you start labeling things with volume, you'll put a three exponent up because you're using three dimensions, three measurements. Okay, so those are the answers for that warm up. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to take a look at the application problem for lesson one. So we have Jackie and Ron. They both have 12 centimeter cubes. Jackie builds a tower six cubes high and two cubes wide. Ron builds one six cubes long and two cubes wide. Then Jackie says her structure has the greater volume because it is taller. Ron says that the structures have the same volume. Who is correct? Draw a picture to explain how you know, and use grid paper if you wish. So we're going to use this dot paper to show because uh, in our, uh, without trying to give away this, this is the paper that they give you the sample uh, to work on. But since I already did that one there, and I don't want to spoil it for you, if you can go to your page nine, you have an open uh, dot isometric dot template that you can use. Um, if you also have extra copies of this, very, very handy for practice. So what I've discovered is that let's just say sometimes students who are super good at calculating things, they may not have an eye for volume and other students maybe, um, it, well, it can, it can just flip flop. Some kids who really are excellent at calculating are also excellent at drawing. And some kids who are not good at calculating are fantastic at drawing. So I don't know which one you are, but uh, you can be better at drawing if you kind of pay attention to how I'm gonna do this. First of all, start in the upper corner if you can. And when you make a three-dimensional box, you have to kind of recognize that you can see multiple faces. 
Okay, so let's just start right here with a line that goes down. And instead of going, notice that these do not have horizontal lines in every column that match. We have to skip a column to get over to here to have a same dot on the horizontal plane. They do this on purpose because in order for a square to pop out at you, it needs to be coming toward you. So I like to start out with a uh, vertical line and then going down at an angle. We're going to use a lot of parallel lines. Parallel means going the same direction. Okay, so this line is parallel to this line. And what I've created is the left facing side of a cube. But when I make one cube, what I need to have is I need to have a V for my base, which is going to look like this. V for the base, and I need a roof for the top. So we'll get there in just a second. A V for the base and a roof for the top to make one cube. Now I'm halfway there, okay? I've got my left facing side with no top, but here's how you close off your right facing side. Here's your bottom, left side front, right side front. Now we have these things called edges. Okay, and each three-dimensional figure will have one. So we're going to close off each side by connecting the edges to the dots. But be very careful to make your lines in the V parallel so that they are parallel with uh, the lines that you started with for the bottom. Okay, it almost looks like a little book that you have open. In fact, if you want to draw a picture of a book, this is what it would look like. You have a V on the top and a V on the bottom and then connect, connect, connect. Now for the rest of the cube, this is one cube, the roof needs to close off the cube. Okay, so it goes down on the bottom and it goes up on the top after connecting those sides with the parallel lines. Now that's one cube. But going back to the application problem, we need to have uh, Jackie's tower that is six cubes high and two cubes wide. So if you take the knowledge of what it, what it takes to make just the base, okay, and we need it to be six cubes high and two cubes wide, I'm going to go down a few dots, okay, and, and you'll have a lot more room if you use just, say, the top of this dot paper as opposed to what's in your book. You can pretty much fit uh, only one on there if you draw it in the middle of your paper. So let's draw Jackie's Tower. Now I'm going to start with my left side and I'm going to notice that in order to get the top on there I have to go up for the, the roof. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of room. I'm going to recognize that if I draw real lightly I could start my roof here. But I need to go down the side to count one of the layers in my height. Okay, now I'm going down. That's the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay, now these are the sides of all my cubes. Now if this is the top, what does the top of your cube look like? Well, it looks like a diamond. Okay, it looks like a rhombus. And that is still part of the same cube, okay? So if I go down to finish off my six cubes, nice and lightly, in case you make a mistake, you can go back and fix it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Notice that we finish lower in this part. That's okay, you want it to. Because what does the bottom of your prism look like? Well, it looks like a V. Okay, so the bottom has a V, the top has a roof. And now at least I know I have my six cubes high. I need it to be two cubes wide though. So since I have uh, finished off sort of this left side, let's take it up and to the right for our second cube. Then you're going to make these parallel lines 
that it almost looks like a fork or a rake or something that's sitting on its back. And that's how you're going to uh, finish off the face of your the front of Jackie's tower. Six cubes high and two cubes wide. Now let's, let's finish this off by closing off our cubes. All parallel lines, parallel to, it's like a pair of L's parallel to here. Now this is the right front, but uh-oh, what happens when we go to the left side? Watch where I'm making my line. Parallel to this bottom V. Every front of each cube in this tower will have a V that is visible. V for visible. Close off, you can just have one big long line, okay? And now you can really see the left side and the right side of these six uh, cubic blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now what about the two cubes wide? We have to go up. This is the third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay, it's a little higher, that's okay. It needs to be parallel, parallel lines, all parallel going the same direction. Now we need to finish this one off. Remember what happens at the top, you make a roof. And now I have Jackie's tower. Now, what is the volume of her tower? So if you use that formula, we would take our length times width times height, okay? So the length and the width are what you would call the area of the base, which, see my other video, if you wanna know what area of the base, length times width, we I talk about that in that one. Okay, now the area of the base here, because I only have one cube on this side, and then it goes two this way. So basically it's a one by two. It's one cube here and two cubes here. So for the volume, it's gonna be a one times two on the base. But the height is six. So when you multiply these out, you see that there are two cubes on the bottom, but then you have to multiply by the height, which is six, and then you get 12 centimeters cubed for the volume for Jackie. Now, we're gonna go on and work on Ron's. Now, Ron says he has six cubes long and two cubes wide. Now, the length, I'm gonna work on the length going across the front, and we need it to go six. So let's start here at our V, the bottom, and we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Six cubes long, okay? And it's going to be two cubes wide. Now if this is the first one, then I have to go back this way for the second, okay? Now, Ron's structure, let's start connecting all the pieces. All these dots should be connected with these little vertical lines, like the rake. Remember, it fell over, and you have all these little tines that are sticking up. It's six long and two wide. But there is no height other than just one. So to close off the top of this, okay, we're gonna close off the left side of each and the right side of each. So close them all off, that's all we can see from the front. And now we're gonna look at this from the top. I can see the roof of this one because there's nothing sitting on it and I can see the roof of this one because there's nothing on it either. So notice when you can see the top, they all have this little roof that you're gonna draw. If you can see the top, you put the roof on, okay? 
And now you can start seeing that Ron's figure with all the little roofs that we're putting on, it his figure does not go up multiple stories, okay, or layers like Jackie's does. But if you apply the formula to Ron's, and we use the length times width, okay, length, so volume equals length times width times height. So we're going to use the 6 for the length, the 2 for the width, and here we have 12 for the area of our base. And then the height is only 1. Remember, that's this side here. And so then you get your 12 times 1 for 12 centimeters cubed. And when you compare, you should see that they are the same. So who is correct? Well, Ron says that the structures are the same. So Ron is correct. And this would be the picture that goes with your explanation. Okay? Jackie's tower is standing up, but if she laid it down, it would look just like Ron's. And I think that is lesson three. We're going to talk about different perspectives on your figures. So I hope this is helpful. A uh, great way to start module five with a little bit of drawing. Uh, click subscribe, come back again, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.